Hello and welcome to the IT Shed. Today we're going to look at CS50's introduction to programming Python. Problem set 3, Grocery List. So we're to implement a program that prompts the user for items, one per line, until the user inputs Control D, which is a common way of ending an input to a program. We then output a grocery list, in all uppercase, sorted alphabetically by item. We're going to prefix each line with the number of times the user inputted that item. So an example, I'm going to type apple, banana, banana again, ice cream. And now we have one apple, two bananas, and one ice cream, and they're all in uppercase. So we're going to make our directory, we're going to cd into the directory, and then we're going to code grocery.py. And then we're going to test it with um, CS50. OK, let's give it a go. So let's look at our to-do list. So we're going to create a dictionary to store our shopping list. We're going to get user input and convert that to uppercase. We're going to loop through our shopping list and we're going to add or append items to it, depending on whether they're there or not. So if they're there, we're going to append another one. So if there's one there already, one banana, we're going to append it to two bananas. And if they're not there, we'll just add a banana or whatever item the user inputs. We're going to be listening for control D to stop the program. We're going to sort our dictionary into alphabetical order and then we're going to print the items. So creating our dictionary. So I'm going to create a variable shopping list. And I'm going to assign that as a dictionary using curly braces. Now the reason we're using a dictionary is because a dictionary is actually perfect for what we're trying to do here. A dictionary uses two values, it uses key and uses value. So in our case, so in our case, our key is going to be our item the user inputs, for instance, Apple. And the value is going to be the amount of apples. So one apple or two apples or three apples. So every time the user inputs an apple, the first time they input it, we'll have one apple. The second time they input it, we'll have two apples, three apples, four apples, etc. So we just get rid of this. Now for the next part, we have to get user input and convert it to an uppercase. So to get the user input, we're going to create a variable called item. I'm going to assign that to input and blank. Space. So what happens here, there's nothing displayed to the user, it's just blank. So the user then just types in his items. So that's why we have nothing within our uh, inverted commas. So when the user inputs the items, they're stored in the variable item. Now to make it uppercase, we're going to use a method, a Python method called dot .upper. So upper, it's a method that returns a string where all characters are in uppercase. So here we have a string, welcome to the IT shed, and that's stored to the variable text. Now text here is converted to uppercase using the method dot upper. That's saved back into the variable text. So if I print text, you'll see over here it's converted to uppercase, welcome to the IT shed, compared to here, which is some of it is title case and some of it's lowercase. So we're going to pin that on here. So one more time, the uh, user will see the output, just a blank, blank space. They'll type in their, their input, as in here. That input is stored in a variable that we just called item. It could be called anything. And upper uh, method will ensure that that is converted to uppercase if it's not uppercase already. So the next part of our program is to loop through our dictionary, adding and appending items, depending on whether they're there or not. So that means iterating through our shopping list. So here we have a shopping list, and it has one key value pair. So Apple is the key, and the number one here is the value. So if we want to iterate through that and get the items from it, so we use a for loop for, for item in shopping list. So for items in shopping list, if we want to print the key, which is Apple, we 
you just print item and that would print out apple okay so if you want to get the value which is one we print shopping list and item so that will get one with that being said let's look at adding and appending items to our shopping list which is a dictionary so here I have a shopping list with one key value pair. So it's Apple and its value is one. So if I print that, you see Apple one, the dictionary is printed with Apple with a value of one. Now I've added an item here, I've signed it to orange. So the idea here is that we check if orange is in the dictionary. If it's not in the dictionary, we add it to the dictionary with a value of one. And if it is there already, then we append the value to two, three, four, etc. So the code for this is an if statement. So if item, which is orange here, is not in the shopping list, then shopping list item is assigned to one. So we're going to add orange to the dictionary. Else, we're going to append it. So what appending means we're just going to append the number here. So if, if it's there, in case of Apple, if it's there already, it's going to be two, three, four, etc. So let's run this. And we see now orange is added to the dictionary. And if it was there already, then orange would be two. So let's bring our if statements over to our program and paste it in. Now I'm just going to get rid of some of this just to clear things up a bit. Because we know what we're doing now. Tell you about program. Next thing we need to do is we need to wrap everything in a while loop just so that we keep looping. Because remember in our program, it keeps looping the whole time, it keeps prompting until you control D is pressed by the by the user. So while true. And I'm going to indent because it's in a while loop. So the next thing we need to do is listen for the user inputting Control D on the keyboard. So if you're to Google Control D in Python, you come up with this error here, and you see it down in Stack Overflow, etc. Pressing Control D in Python. Alternatively, just go to our assignment and click Hints. We see Try and Accept Statement. So I'm going to copy the error here, and here I'm going to do our Try and Accept Statement, and I'm going to do the Accept down here. For the moment, it's going to break if the user inputs control D. So we have to indent because we're in a try and accept loop. Okay, so we have our while loop try and accept statement. And if the, if the user inputs control D, we're going to break out of it. So let's test our program. So if we break out of our loop, we're going to print shopping list. I'm going to run the program. So I'll type in orange, apple, bread, 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 coffee, coffee, tea. So pressing Control D now, and we have one orange, one apple, three breads, two coffees, and one tea. Okay, the next thing we need to do is we need to sort our dictionary into alphabetical order. So to do that, we first have to get our keys. So we're going to use the keys method. That's another inbuilt method in Python. So to explain that to you, let's take an example. So we have a dictionary here called car. And in that dictionary, we have three keys. We got brand, we got model and we got year. Now brand, the value for that is Ford, the value for model is Mustang, and the value for year is 1964. Now if we want to just get our keys, so in this column here, we're going to use a keys function. 
this is another inbuilt method in Python. So what keys we're looking for? We're looking for the keys of the car dictionary. So car. So that's car.keys. So we got the dictionary car and we're looking for the keys within that. So we're using the keys method. And we're going to assign that to a variable. I'm just going to call the variable x. And then we're going to print x. If I run the program, you'll see the keys brand, model, and year. It's very important to notice here that this is actually a list. So it's a list of keys. So whereas here we have a dictionary containing the keys and the values, that keys takes the keys from the dictionary and converts them into a list. So now we have a list instead of a dictionary. That's just very important that you realize that. So it's a list. So it was a dictionary, but now it's a list here of just containing the keys. So back to our program, what keys are we looking for? So we're looking for the keys of shopping list. So here. And I'm going to assign that to a variable and I'm going to call the variable keys. So this variable here, keys, now contains all the keys that are in the shopping list dictionary that are inputted by the user up here. So now we have the keys, but we still don't have them in alphabetical order. So for that, we're going to use another method called sorted. This is yet again a Python inbuilt method. So let's look at an example of sorted. Here we have a list letters. Now letters contains, would you believe it, letters. But they're all mixed up. They're not in alphabetical order. So sorted, as I said, is a Python method that will sort these letters into alphabetical order. What we do here is we place the name of the list, in this case letters, in as a parameter. I'm going to assign that to just a variable I'm going to again call x and I'm going to print x. As you can see here, this list has now been sorted into alphabetical order. So back to our program again. I could create a new variable called sorted keys, but just to keep it simple, I'm going to use the same variable keys, assign that to sorted, and in the parameters of sorted, I'm going to put keys. So this is our variable here, keys, containing our keys from our shopping list. I put it in here into sorted, into the parameter, and it's going to sort them. So it's just getting the variable, sorting it, and assigning it back to the same variable again. I think it's just easier to have one variable rather than having keys and sorted keys. It kind of makes you up a small bit. So we keep it simple. So if I was to print that, And run the program. So grape, banana, apple, and flower. Control D. Now we have a list, and the list is sorted in alphabetical order compared to the way we inputted it here. So now that we have our sorted keys, we now need to get the values associated with each of those keys. What I'm going to do here is create a new dictionary and I'm going to transfer each of the sorted keys into the dictionary, but I'm also going to add the value for each key. So I'm going to create a dictionary called sorted keys. I'll make that a dictionary. So for this I'm going to use a for loop. So for value in keys. So for each value in keys, I'm going to get the shopping list value. So for each of the keys, this is the value. So if it is apple, and then the value for apple is one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer each key and each value into our sorted keys dictionary. T 
it to its value. So once again, I'm looping over our keys here, which is sorted list, and I'm associating each value with each key. So the last thing we need to do now is print our key value pair to the screen. Now remember, our assignment wants us to print it in the form of value, so it would be one apple, two I don't know, hats, etc. So for that we're going to use a new method called items. Again, this is an inbuilt Python method. So an example here would be back to our car. So we have a dictionary here called car, and again we have our keys here and our values here. Now, dot keys that we used earlier, we'll just return the keys. So instead I'm going to use dot items. So car dot items. So with dot items we'll return the key value pair. So send it to x, and I'll print x. So if I run it, you see here we have our key value items here. So brand is Ford, the model is Mustang, the year is 1964, etc. So back here we're going to use a for loop. So for key, comma value in sorted keys dot items. Let's give him some error there, so I'm just going to copy this. I'll fix it. So for each key and each value in sorted keys dot items, so it's getting the key value dot items is getting the key value pair from sorted keys. So we're going to print value because remember we need to print the value first: the one apple, the two banana, etc. Value and key. Before I do anything else, I need to get rid of this break up here. And I need to indent this. So before I submit a CS50, I want to import a module called sys, the sys module, and I want to bring down sys.exit here just to close the program once we've finished running through everything. Otherwise, it will just stall and we're going to get errors. So I'm going to use the import statement, import sys. Down here, you want to sys.exit. Sys.exit will just close the program once it gets to this point. So now we'll submit to CS50. And as you can see here, we have all greens. So another program done. So before I end, I just want to run through this one more time, just in case you still have any questions at this stage. So here we're importing sys module. Sys module is going to be used with sys.exit just to close the program once we're finished with it. Here we have try and accept statement. So the accept statement is looking for the user pressing control D. So we're inputting our items from the user, converting them to uppercase. We're checking to see if the item is in the shopping list. So if it's not in the shopping list, we're going to add it. Our shopping list is up here, and it's a dictionary. And if it is, we're going to append to it. So if there's one there already, we'll just make it two, and there's two there, we'll make it three. So we're getting the keys for the shopping list, then we're sorting it. So we're basically making it into a list, and then we're sorting the list in alphabetical order. So then that we have our keys, we're adding the value to each key. So if it's Apple again, one value, two values, etc. And then we're looping through getting the, the key and the value in our sorted keys. So getting the items, which are the key value pairs, and then we're printing them to the screen in the, in the form of value and the key. So thank you for joining me in this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.